So, hello. Um, so this is a well, was going to be a presentation and some demoing and live coding of Praxis Live um, for similar technical reasons. Uh, I've moved my slides onto USB stick, and there won't be any uh, actual live coding demonstration, unfortunately. Um, I am doing a, this is going to be kind of an extended uh, state of Libra graphics about Praxis Live then with some slides. However, uh, there is a workshop tomorrow morning as well, which is, is, is slightly uh, an advertisement for. So hopefully if you're interested in looking further, you can come along and we'll go through some of those examples that I was going to show today then too. So uh, who am I? I'm Neil C. Smith. I'm artist and technologist. I live in Oxford in the UK. Uh, I worked for 10 years um, doing kind of web consultancy work for cultural uh, charity sector, prior to which I'd worked in for five years doing culture and local government. So slightly eclectic background. Uh, spent 15 years making various creative applications in Java, uh, various kinds of uh, interactive uh, projections and performances. Uh, so I now freelancing, doing various things around open source Java technologies, particularly media-based and graphics-based. Um, so practice live as part of that. Um, so doing bits of work around GStreamer bindings for Java, audio utilities, and getting involved with the Apache NetBeans IDE. Uh, what I'm not coding, or what I'm coding for sometimes, is creating audiovisual performances, um, generative interactive spaces and projections. Uh, so it's this. Um, this was an interactive audiovisual instrument which was capturing movement in a space. Uh, projection mapping onto an old uh, chimney space. This again was interactive where faces appeared in the smoke and followed people around the room. Um, whispered lorem ipsum at them, which is one of the scariest things you will ever hear. <laughs> um, and uh, so this is a projection piece for a public square actually in Oxford itself. We had two camera booths, uh, two infrared cameras, one on either side, uh, where people could interact with scenes and each other uh, projected on a building. And then the other end of the scale, um, so that, that project and this one were created in collaboration with um, someone called Naomi Morris, who is a dance and video artist. And this is a quirky take on a magic lantern which actually had a little com Intel compute stick and an LED projector and RFID tags in the slides. Uh, more recently, I've got into doing live coding, um, mostly audio stuff, some graphic stuff, uh, and particularly yeah, so taking IDEs into nightclubs in Athens or scary mornings in Poland, talking to 800 Java developers. OK. so. Try, try to cover, if you saw me talk about this in London, try not to cover exactly what it is, but some of the things that have happened since. But Praxis Live is a hybrid visual ID for live created coding. Um, obviously, I'm using it quite a bit for live coding at the moment. It's not specifically designed just for live coding, and that most of the projection work you saw was created with it. Uh, it is as much about having a, an interactive environment for kind of creative work, installation, graphics, creative flow, that sort of thing. And it's as much a runtime as an IDE. You don't have to use the graphical aspects of it. You, know, you can build self-contained applications with it. Um, so, yeah, that sort of stuff, which I've talked about. So this is what it looks like. That's what it looks like now, actually. It's had a little bit of a revamp uh, in the recent version. Uh, I added Bezier curves to the graph. I've, I've had so many features over the last year. I added Bezier curves, which took two hours, and that got the most interest of anything I've done in the last year. <laughs> uh, so what you see here is it, it's an, uh, an IDE that mixes node-based interface and code. Uh, any single one of those nodes is backed by code that you can live edit. Uh, so that's, it has, the runtime has an embedded Java compiler. 
So we're talking about something that you can uh, recode anything that it's doing. Uh, so key features, intuitive graphical patching. We can basically extend it as much as we want uh, as it's running. Uh, so built-in support for doing things with OpenGL, GStreamer, Jack Audio. Uh, built-in support for binding MIDI OSC UIs or physical computing, so things like, uh, I do quite a lot of stuff uh, that Magic Lantern had Tink Tinkerforge, which is open hardware. Uh, so there's Tinkerforge support built in, but any sort of open hardware sensors and things, it's easy to integrate that and link it to any thing you're working with. And ability to create standalone projects, uh, cross-platform. And finally, since uh, when I last spoke about this, it wasn't running on the Pi. Uh, it now does run on the Pi. Uh, it's free and open source, built on top of many great projects. Uh, it's not, yeah, it's kind of, I was talking to someone, that, yes, I'm in many ways the only developer of it, but it brings together, yeah, it's, it's much about joining the pieces together. Um, so it can work with anything that runs on the JDK, um, but particularly comes with built-in support for processing. So any of those nodes in a visual graph is basically a processing sketch that you can live edit. Uh, Built-in support for GStreamer video, and um, built on top of uh, Apache NetBeans platform and IDE. Uh, some of you may know NetBeans as in just NetBeans. Uh, it was donated by, so it was Sun, then Oracle, they've donated it to the Apache Foundation, which uh, I've recently got involved with as a committer, and it's, it's an interesting process. Very different. Uh, Alt tab now. That was going to be the bit where I showed you some live coding demos. That might be less easy. Um, but I do have. <laughs> Never done this before. Uh, so last minute, I have moved a video of. Where are we? Where's up? So whether this will work or not, we'll soon find out. But uh, this is the. A video of the talk I was doing in Poland. Uh, I'm just going to skip forward a little bit to give you some idea of some of the things I'm talking about. Mm. Possibly. What's that mean? <laughs> Can I click that? Okay. Uh, where did I want to go? <laughs> Just about hear me uh, talking in the background there. Examples of this talk. Um, and I thought I'd see how easy it was to recreate this. So. The bit you just missed was me saying that was, uh, I was looking at various other sorts of live uh, coding environments and creative environments. Uh, that particular example is ported from Faro, which is a small talk environment. This is one of the graphic examples that we. Here we have a. Uh, so, again, something we can play around with. So what you may or may not be able to see... Some yeah, yeah. Shut up. Um, what you may or may not be able to see is... It's a bit smaller, but that's a, a very simple processing sketch. So just the draw method processing sketch, um, which is one of the nodes within that graph. And every time I hit save, it's recompiled and immediately... So all the state is maintained. It keeps running. So, and then the stream. Uh, but it's a little bit simpler. Uh, to echo what I just said, uh, yeah. So then started playing around with this in 3D. Uh, so obviously you've got 3D OpenGL support as well, and working with that. The um, one of the things that's been added since I last spoke about this is the ability to pass any kind of arbitrary binary data around a graph um, between graphs. So, uh, where are we? Um, so, I was doing, so you can have multiple graphs 
running at any point, so there's an audio graph and a video graph here, uh, and just sending FFT data back and forth in order to. So that gives us the start of a building block, but it's, yeah, that particular API is, is a good thing to use generally, but it's not necessarily so quick and easy to put together when you're trying to play something immediately. So in this particular component, I just built up some simple uh, forms that use these clocks and filters, do various things around indices and things. And then we can instead do something like So sending um, audio that data there and FFT data into the shape and, and manipulating that. Uh, some, sometimes it says, maybe do this. There's been a lot of support. I know this is a graphics conference with a lot of support for doing audio DSP live coding and uh, sequencing, of course, a bit added. Okay. Cheating time. Good thing about that was I didn't actually have to try and do that in front of you, but <laughs> that's, that's where the fun is. So, uh, history of this as a project. Um, it actually dates back as far as 2011. I started as a project, I was, I was building various things, just as a, a kind of repository to throw some code at that I was reusing all the time and building. Uh, so that originally was not processing based. I'd got my own OpenGL pipeline in there. And there's very limited support for adding custom components and coding. So the whole thing was basically ex extensively rewritten with processing added and this ability to recode anything in uh, towards the end of 2015. So that, that was kind of the state you saw it if you were in London. Um, version 3 in 2017 added support for Java 8. There's quite a lot of, um, which you won't get in sort of standard processing of, of using uh, functional programming. Uh, where possible, processing three, siphon and spout support for sharing textures uh, if you're on Mac or Windows, and it's really annoying there isn't an equivalent on Linux. Uh, support for the Pi, uh, support for adding third party libraries in, which is uh, great. There's, uh, okay, back to, here's the unprepared bit. Uh, so that's, right, that doesn't do F11. Um, so I added, this is one of the examples I wanted to show you, but in terms of third-party libraries, um, this was bringing together various things. This is HE Mesh, uh, which is a processing library. It's very interesting if you're doing um, geometries and things like that, and using, so what I was doing there is actually bringing in, doing things with geometries and then bringing in video textures and shader textures and things into that, and you can quickly and easily patch between and, and work with. Uh, and also mouse responsive, so that was something that's been added, so it is, uh, is actually keyboard and mouse support. Uh, and then most recently, which is meant to be finished by now, but you know, it's almost there. If you're coming tomorrow, you get the release candidate to play with. Uh, Fezzi Connections, yay. Um, much more focused on recoding anything, so there are a few uh, components that weren't recodable uh, so there's been a push to kind of get them everything to be recodable and also a push towards being able to recode with anything. So generic data paths and pushing any sort of data, vector data, that sort of thing through building components. And um, as part of a kind of way to see about uh, building user base and making it a bit more sustainable project, uh, the core runtime, which so there's an IDE and there's a runtime, which has always been slightly separate, but more of a focus on that as a usable thing and relicensing it 
and the LGPL. Um, so practice is kind of built around, so Andrew Sorensen, uh, developer of a project called Extempore, talked about cyber physical coding. Um, but it's the idea of real-time programming of real-time systems, which is uh, kind of a big influence in terms of, of where Practice Live is and is going. Uh, this idea, user code as a first-class citizen, you know, turtles all the way down, that's a phrase you know, but the idea that uh, it's not a node system that has a lot of native components and a scripting language, and you're, you know, if you if you're having to create custom functionality, it's it's running in slower or something like that. This, the idea is the entire stack of this application. You can go as deep or as high level as you want. You don't have to code at all. You can code very low level. It's up to you. Uh, and that goes down to, so on the audio side, being able to code sample level DSP and um, play with filters. That's you know, that sort of performance level up to you know, patching together video components and, and filters very easily. Um, without getting too technical, uh, but it's based around a sort of forest of actors architecture. So actors as in programming model. Um, so we have a graph of components that are running there, uh, which you patch together as you wish, but you can have as many graphs as you want. Um, so different video patches, audio patches, whatever. Uh, so there's built-in support for communicating between them. And um, various sort of black box services that are part of that, so live compiling or background resource loading, background loading of images. Uh, and then with the same thing, we can then split that across different processes or different machines. Um, so it's quite possible to uh, have the IDE and bits of a project running on one laptop and something running on another. Um, I know a few people have used that. Running things in multiple processes. Uh, me doing real-time stuff on a JVM gets criticized occasionally with a certain thing called the garbage collector. Uh, but actually, it's one way of mitigating doing some real-time stuff is to split things across different processes. Uh, and then uh, uh, this, so running on the Pi. So it's possible to uh, have a project running on a Pi or a group of Pis and, and control them all from a, a laptop. Uh, and if you're, say, coming from processing background, you know, processing what's practiced live give you above PDE, uh, real-time live programming. Uh, multiple sketches, so it wraps things so it feels like you're programming a sketch in every component. Uh, lots of pre-built things that you can use as a basis. Uh, Built-in support for GStreamer 1, uh, which is coming, I think, in the Preston Video Library soon. Uh, blending fixed. Um, so I extended the processing pipeline to use pre-multiplied alpha, because they have a... I don't want to get into the flame war of whether you should or you shouldn't, but uh, processing mixes the two. Uh, so you start compositing down a whole graph chain of things, and it goes wrong. Uh, various things around resource management, uh, so loading images, caching things. Um, also, in terms of if you have a long chain of operations, it will reuse textures from before and work out what it can copy and not. Uh, threading and distribution done right, so this idea of being able to, to pass things lock-free between uh, a background process that's talking to the net or audio or sensors or whatever, that's all built in, and you don't have to think about. Uh, built on top of a professional IDE, so it's all built on top of a NetBeans platform and IDE. Lots of added things included, and the one thing that niggles me about processing is uh, claims of floss, but running on not supporting OpenJDK properly. Um, so that's one thing I yeah, definitely do. And in the Windows and Mac installers, generally uh, use OpenJDK. Uh, what might you build? So I thought I'd just share a couple of images of things that I found that you know, other people have have made. So Max, who unfortunately couldn't come, was going to be coming and talking about another project called Freeliner. Uh, which is a mapping software. Uh, but that's him. Uh, I'm not quite sure where that is, but he's using the distributed hub, so he's got uh, the video project actually um, running from another machine, projecting in a, a nightclub, I think, um, doing things with live graphics. And then, yeah, nice setup with two screens to be actually editing that and working with it live. 
Uh, that's one of his things, mixing practice live and freeline together. Uh, some other images. Hopefully this will... It's a nice video he sent me last night, which I tried to put into here. This might be a bit loud, actually. No, very really nice visuals anyway. Uh, sounds a bit odd. Uh, Matthias, I met uh, doing a workshop in Tübingen uh, for Generate in October last year. So he'd done a lot of work with processing before. Uh, he made good use of the, well, Tinker4Jar are German, so it's kind of a <laughs> patriotic thing to do, but he made this excellent setup with uh, a load of Tinkerforge um, components to control his processing sketches via Access Live. He's doing really beautiful things, lots of monochrome things, and this this is using um, luminance of a video uh, file to manipulate and mash up uh, lots of still images. Um, there's uh, uh, the uh, Punkamat, I think it's Punkamat.de, and or his uh, Instagram. There's a lot of videos of his stuff. It's really nice. Uh, lots of lots of. Uh, Simple 3D, really effective tunnels, and then I got a great, had a great interaction on uh, the Gitter support, which I just set up a couple of weeks ago. The guy's name I do not know. I just know that's his Twitter handle. Uh, who uh, had a little bit of support turned out, had a little bit of experience turned out later with was working with Ruby, but hadn't used any Java before, not used Practice Live before. And in about two weeks, uh, he was doing his first VJing setup, and he built that. So that's with the UI builder, uh, controlling, working with shaders. Uh, yeah, it's probably one of the most, probably the most impressive UIs I've seen someone build in practice because I don't tend to use it. Um, and definitely for someone who'd only been using it for a couple of weeks. And so he's got, he's uh, on a Mac, so he's able to use Siphon to bring textures in and run uh, like preview windows and things. But he built that. Uh, and that's on GitHub as well. Let's put it up. A few nice things people have said. Uh, so the guy who made the um, uh, the VJ thing was talking about how you know just speed of developing it and the thing with it was he really enjoyed. Uh, okay, so that's really why I'm speaking tomorrow morning. Uh, if you want to have a go, you want to see some more examples uh, workshop. Slightly early, maybe uh, ten thirty. Not too much beer tonight. Uh, and thank you. Uh, everything is on GitHub. Uh, I know someone questioned that at some point in the mailing list when I applied to talk. So uh, there's Practice Live website. All the sources there. If you want to come in, get involved, have a go, talk to me. It'd be great. Uh, any questions? Uh, so, uh, Spout is the Windows equivalent. Siphon is on that, so the support for that. They allow direct texture sharing between processors. Uh, okay, but the, I mean, how do other process um, share that texture? Is it something that um, depends on the other software also? Or yes, so uh, you basically, it's like... Uh, I think it's like a client server. So something something that sends textures acts as a server and any client can connect to that and it just gets pumped a texture. There's really no way to operate with X to get the X? Not as far as I'm aware. It's okay. I've seen or been involved with loads of discussions with people and, yeah. and lots of people who... So there's a number of groups who are pushing Linux as a... You know, Libra VJ platform who are really pushing. I mean, I'm not a VJ, I just happen to realize that some VJs quite like easy. Um, 
and that I know there's been. Uh, so we will need to, to have a new protocol like that in the next such. Potentially, there is something coming. Um, is it pipe wire? Pipe wire, I think it's called. Pipe wire. Okay. Which is uh, one of the guys who really set up GStream. So it's a little bit kind of trying to do for video and for audio. So like equivalent of Jack for audio, uh, but also okay. for video. And I th think there might be a possibility that it will allow text to share. Okay. I have a vague feeling from things I've seen in the GStream mailing list that there's something in there that would allow it now, but it feels like a bit of a black box. Okay. <laughs> so from your perspective, what, what layer would that optimally implement that? What do you mean? So in to do text to share? Yeah, text to share. Like, should that be in the OpenGL part of the stack or higher, lower? Or I don't know. Okay. It's a simple answer to that. <laughs> and I think it will change um, in terms of what the OpenGLs you're using is. Because I think GLES might have some functionality for that anyway. But the pipewire is a lot also about uh, these uh, container based things like Fatpak and Snap and app images where you mm. isolate the applications and then you want access to the webcam or doing things like yeah, sharing okay. media things or getting even access to the media devices. Because the way things normally done on Linux is that you directly get access to, uh, mm. to webcam from the application, but this provides an, yeah, an API of requesting texture data from the webcam. Okay, thank you.